Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Well, you don't get it unless you say it. Everyone say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Praise God, because what you speak is what you eat. You don't speak it, you don't get it. Amen? You must decree it. This is warrior night. Amen? Not wimpy night. <clears throat> you want to be a wimp, go to a normal church. <laughs> Or whatever they call those things. We're not normal. We're abnormal according to the world. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live training session. Amen. This is not a Bible study. This is a training session because we are at war. And that must be understood. Everyone say we're at war. Go to Revelation 12. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 12. <laughs> I guess they call them uh, family friendly or whatever churches. I don't know. Soulless churches, whatever. Feed you coffee and donuts. <clears throat> Glory, Revelation 12, verse 7. Let's speak it. And what? And war broke out in heaven. Is that war still going on? That must be a reality. So if there's a war going on in heaven, there's a war going on here. Amen. <clears throat> Michael and the angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon <clears throat> and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer, in the dimension where God's realm is at. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Is he still doing that? Yes, that's what they call it's a plan of deception. People are walking around with masks and proclaiming that they got plagued with COVID. And it's nothing but a lie. But they're going to proclaim many deaths to COVID. If you follow the money, you're going to find out why they're proclaiming deaths to COVID. Who deceives the whole world. He cast out, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Those angels are called principalities. The rulers over areas and nations and territories. They control the demons in this realm. It says in verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Come on, read it with me. Amen. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the what? The blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to what? Death. See, when you and I were brought into this world, the only power we knew was willpower. Amen? It was willpower. Try to put your will in the power. And they called it, come on, just say yes, just. You can go do it. It was emotional enticement to encourage the willpower. The willpower is out of the soul. It's not out of the spirit. So when you and I were born into this world, we were trying to overcome many things by the soul, not by the spirit. That's why we were always made decisions on what we felt. That's why the enemy knows how to play with people because if he can play with your emotions, he can cause you to go into the area of willpower and not in the spirit. Amen? And willpower has no power. It's all temporary. Because to fight a demon, you can't have willpower. You must have the spirit power. You can't overcome it. So there's overcoming power that is different. 
And there's a level of overcoming power that God releases for each assignment. But if we're not in position, we don't get it. If we're still touching things that are unclean, it won't come. If we're still agreeing with the things that God disagrees with, it won't happen. You know, one of the things the enemy likes to do is bring us into an emotion of fear. Why? Because it nullifies what? A sound mind. That's how people get schizo. It's fear. Anxious. Fear. They call it bipolar and all kinds of other stuff. Now, they'll come up with any kind of label, but it's a demon of fear. People become hypochondriacs because of fear. Why? Because it's the voices or the powers of darkness and everything that they do, there's always something fearful about it. Amen? Is everybody okay? So there's the power of his Christ. Again, we were born with willpower, but we must be born again with the power of Christ. That's overcoming power. Everyone say the power of Christ is overcoming power. So Christ was a created vessel in human form. They called Jesus. He was crucified, died, and rose by the power of that was given to him, Christ. And then it was distributed to those who were following in his footsteps of salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why many people have still not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They think baptism of water is the Holy Spirit baptism when it's not. So in this overcoming empowerment, it's by sanctification of his blood. And we overcome with this power by the words that come out of our mouth. Words of testimony. Words of life-giving power. And we are qualified by a constant denial of self. Remember the formula to stay is called deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That's a positioning formula. So if you're not denying yourself, how can you have overcoming power? You can't. And you never will. Until that begins to fall into place. You will never overcome the presence of addiction. The presence of evil. The presence of fear. The presence of doubt. These are demonic spirits that influence people. With the willpower. You can over, over, only overcome it with the power of Christ. Amen. It's called overcoming power. Second Corinthians 4. So the first thing that needs to overcome is you, ourself. Amen? We need overcoming power to deny ourselves. You can't deny yourself with willpower. It'll just promote it. When we were out there being addicts and goofy and stuff like that, many times we wanted to stop. We tried to do it in our own willpower, but we couldn't. You notice that when you're in jail, you don't, those desires leave after a few days. In fact, you'd smoke 20 packs of cigarettes in a day and it was gone. Ah, I didn't, you didn't care anymore when you're in jail. Because when you're in jail, those demons leave. And then they come back about two weeks before you're getting ready to come out of, get out of jail. And they start enticing you with all of these thoughts. Why? Because they use you to get fed. Pornography and all the other stuff. They want to get fed. And you can't overcome them with willpower. Only with the power of Christ. In verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. See, there is a fine line that people fall into. They move out of the spirit into the soul or into the flesh. Verse 8, we are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, 
that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore do not what? Lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed day by day. So that renewing does not come without God's presence. Amen? It doesn't come without feeding your spirit with God's word. It doesn't come without worship. Titus chapter 3. <clears throat> Overcoming power. Hallelujah. Again, you got to overcome yourself first and your desires. <clears throat> you know, we're in a time right now where there's so much influence and so much more demonic presence on the earth that, you know, we, we, you can't overcome with willpower. In verse 4, <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 4, is everybody there? Let's speak it. But when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the what? Washing of regeneration and renewing in the what? In the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become what? Heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm when? Constantly, all the time. That's where people lose their identity. Some people have never gotten their identity. They call themselves Christians. They've been Christians for the last 30 years. They call themselves a Christian, but they don't have the identity who they really are. Because if they did, they would overcome. <clears throat> Hello? This is a faithful saying, and this, these things I affirm want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be what? Careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish what? Disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second management, knowing that such a person is what? Warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Wow. So there's a regeneration and renewing of the spirit of power until Christ is expressed. It is the ability to move from the flesh to Christ. Does everybody understand that? See, so when, you, when something's coming at you, when you're being attacked, when thought, you, are, you have the ability, the power to overcome. So you might not be thinking about anything. You're over at work, you're busy, this, that, and whatever. And somebody comes up to you and says something, whatever. And your flesh wants to take over or the old man wants to come up. But you instantly move from flesh to spirit. Why? Through the overpowering of Christ. That's overcoming. So you're overpowering those emotions and those desires. You're overpowering them. Why? You're overcoming that overcoming power of Christ Jesus. If you're really in that place and in that position, you're able to do it instantly. There's no hesitation. You don't have to wait. That's the whole thing about being Christ-like. You're able to move from flesh to spirit right away. In fact, you don't even react. You respond. Does everybody get this? This is vitally important now. Because many people are getting pushed out of position, backsliding. Why? They're not overcoming. 
They're not staying renewed. They're not staying regenerated. They're not staying refreshed. And they're, listen, you can't stay renewed if you're still touching unclean things. It, it dis disqualifies. If you're still watching things that you're not supposed to. It disqualifies you. You'll stay dry. You won't be filled with the Spirit. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. You will, again, you want to have the ability to move from flesh to Christ with no hesitation. Acts chapter 10. Remember, what you learn tonight, you should teach. Everything we, we are taught, God wants us to be able to teach it. Acts 10, verse 37. Overcoming power. Too many people are being overcome by the powers of darkness. Is everybody there? Verse 37. Anybody there? Praise God. 37. Let's speak it together. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Well, how was God with him? By the baptism of the Holy Spirit of the anointing. Amen? In fact, Jesus didn't go out and do anything until the Spirit came upon him. Now he had overcoming power of Christ. But it says God was with him. But he went out freeing individuals that were oppressed by the devil. By the what? The devil. Is oppression from the devil? Is fear from the devil? Is addiction from the devil? Is anxiety from the devil? Is sickness from the devil? Yes. And to finally get people get this and understand this, and they are filled with the Spirit of God and get a reality. See, reality is not what you see. It's what you don't see. So it's our responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen. You got to know what's influencing you. If you don't, you're dangerous. And if you're a person that's always led by their emotions, God can never trust you. Amen? Hallelujah. The anointing is with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, power, because God was with him. Why? Because the anointing was with him. The power is with him. Proverbs 18. Overcoming power. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Glory. 1821, Proverbs, everybody is there. Can we speak this together, please? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Wow. From the, uh, uh, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Remember, what you speak is what you eat. <clears throat> power to overcome is in the tongue also. Spoken words of God. That's why we have the word of God. But it's got to be backed by the anointing. There's no victory in the soul or, or in the spirit against the powers of darkness. There's no victory. You cannot overcome the devil in your thoughts. You'll overcome him in your words. And he knows exactly every one of your thoughts. That's why they're called spirits. They know what you're thinking. That's why when you and I pray in tongues, the devil doesn't know what you're praying. But everything else he knows what you're praying. And he's going to do everything he can to interpret or interrupt it. Or change it and alter it.
That's why you got to know how to battle spiritually and attack those powers of darkness that are coming against your prayers and that are coming against the angels working on your behalf. See, this is what this is all about, is learning spiritual warfare and become a warrior in the spirit, not in the flesh and not in the soul. It does no good. Amen? Power to overcome in the tongue spoken of God's words, backed by the anointing. Again, there's no victory in the flesh or in the soul. Only in the spirit. Matthew 8. Matthew 8, verse 5. <clears throat> and verse 5, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion soldier came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be what? Healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Powerful. Why? What did he ask Jesus? Just say one word. You ain't got to move. You don't have to show up. Your word will penetrate and heal my servant. That is the power of the tongue and word backed by the anointing. See, people can get healed in any country, any island, any city, and any state, just by you speaking it right from here. But you must have the anointing and the faith for it to go forth. Amen? It's called overcoming power. Speak a word, Lord, and he'll be healed. See, moving from the flesh or the soul into the what? Spirit. That's overcoming power. No hesitation or no delay. Ephesians chapter 4. You must examine yourself to see if you're in that position or not. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, verse 25. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Lying. Is that out of the mouth? Yeah. Let each of you what? Speak truth with his neighbor. <laughs> For we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? Don't give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is what? In need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the spirit by the things that we say. Amen? The Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for re the day of redemption, let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? And don't make place for the devil by the things that we speak, by the things that we touch and agree with. Amen? 1 John chapter 4.
First John chapter 4. You know, when, when the word, when the voice of the Lord came to me, which I didn't even know was his voice, and I was crying out for help. And uh, he said to me, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol or do you want a new life? It took me a minute to think about that. A new life. Well, I wanted to get off of drugs and alcohol. I wanted to stop living that way. But I realized it wasn't going to, it was like, well, if you don't want a new life, you're not going to stop doing those things. It'll be temporary. And you'll go right back to what you were doing again. And I realized when, if I was the answer, I wanted a new life. I mean, I had to give up everything. My family, everything. Start all over. No matter what it was, if I wanted a new life, I had to step into a new life, a new life realm, a new way of living, a new way of thinking, brand new. And when I said to him, I want a new life, you know, I was expecting something to maybe happen. Nothing happened. The only thing he said was, show me. Show me you want a new life. And I did whatever it took. I stayed away from everything. I did willpower. Man, I locked myself in the house. I had no phones, no nothing. I had no communicate for about two months. <laughs> Went to detox. Used that 12-step thing. I used it as a prayer. Because I didn't know how to pray. And God sent someone over that I was in a drug role for many years and I hadn't seen him for two years and he led me to, uh, led me to the Lord. Then I had a visitation from the Lord to change my life. And I got the new life. But I didn't get it the same day that I wanted it. it. Took two months later. See, everybody wants a drive through Everybody wants a new life but not willing to pay for it. Jesus paid for me and you to get the new life. And we got to pay for cooperation with it. See, we are not saved by grace in other words, unmerited favor, which people think it is. Grace is God's plan. We're saved by cooperating with God in his plan. That's why he says, come out from among them. Be separate. Don't touch those things that are unclean. Then I'll be a father to you. But there's a process of regeneration. There's a process of renewing. There's a process of maintaining. It's not a one-time event. It's continuously. And whatever is causing an individual to stumble, get rid of it. Walk away from it. Not in willpower, but in the power of Christ. Use your words to destroy it. His words. Jesus spoke to the tree and it died. But he was, the anointed. he was anointed. But if you're not connected, then you're disconnected. Amen? How long can people go on with willpower? Look at all the deception. Look, the whole world is under deception. They are deceived. Those individuals will take the mark. And they don't even know it. They already have. And don't even know it. People are getting vaccinated and dying. Now the FDA is going to approve this vaccination. But they're only approving it because they've been coerced to approve it. But it's still a side effect. And people are cursed for taking it and don't even know it. Hallelujah. Why? Because my people are destroyed for no lack of knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is what? Love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Not lust, love. That's two different things. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, are we going to be like he is in this world if, without the overcoming power of Christ? No. No. 
Therefore, there is no fear in what? Love. But perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, there's a disconnect. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he's not seen? And this is the commandment that we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. As he is, so are we. That's called identity. Maintaining an identity in Christ. Again, many people still don't know who they are. In Romans chapter 8. In verse 31. Romans 8 verse, verse 31. Overcoming power. Yeah, if you can't overcome yourself and deny yourself, you're not going to overcome the voice of the stranger. You're not going to overcome your emotions. Verse 31, let's speak it. What then shall we say to these things if God is what? For us, who can be against us? He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Is God for you in the flesh? No. Is he for you in the soul? No. He's only for you in the spirit. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who, over, who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as the sheep for slaughter. Yet in all things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. Can you be a more than a conqueror in the flesh? No, can you be a more than a conqueror in the soul? No, only in the spirit. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. More than conquerors. How do you become a more than conqueror? You move from the flesh and the soul into the spirit instantly. To what? Respond, not react. And to what? Overcome. But you got to be filled, regenerated, and renewed. First John chapter 2. <clears throat> Overcoming power. It's not willpower, soul power. Or mind power. First John chapter two, verse thirteen. Let's speak it together. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. You, for his name's sake, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it's the last hour. 
They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, and that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. And you know all things. Remember, the Spirit tells us things to come, and He leads us to all truth. But if you're not filled with the Spirit, regenerated and renewed in the Spirit, you won't be led by the Spirit. You'll be led by how you feel, what you think. Amen? I'm going to close at Luke 10. You know, life and death is in one compromise. That's all it takes is one compromise to lead to death. I've seen it happen over and over and over. I'm really sick and tired of seeing it. And hearing about it. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give, give you what? The authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you're in the flesh, no. If you're in the soul, no, only in the spirit. Amen. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babe, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal himself. Who wills to reveal himself. See, Jesus wants to reveal himself to many people. But there's a process of that too. You know, many people are waiting on a visitation from God. But there's a process of that too. We see many miracle signs and wonders. Look at all the things God has done in your life. Don't neglect the little things. Amen? Never despise the little small beginnings. But you got to begin somewhere. Amen? And as you're faithful to the little, he gives you more. And when you use what he's given you, he'll give you even more. You don't have to go beg for things from God. You have storehouses and warehouses with your names on them. As you complete the assignments, they are released. But you've got to complete the assignment according to his way, not yours. Not in willpower, but overcoming power of Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask, Lord, that the seed that's been parted tonight and that each and every one will grow and prosper and bring to remembrance by the Spirit so that we are sensitive and not falling into willpower or flesh power, but maintaining the excellence power of Christ Jesus to flow through us that we may overcome any attack of the enemy in the spirit as warriors for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.